Good afternoon. Today's topic is population growth and economic development, keeping in mind the question, how big is big, regarding the countries China and New Zealand. China has the most population in the world, holding 1.3 billion or 20% of the world's population. This problem began in the year 1965. It was thanks to Mao Zedong that China is having population problems. Zedong was the leader of China at the time, and he did not believe in contraception. In fact, he encouraged the people of China to have a lot of children because to him, the more manpower a country has, the stronger the country is. This prevented the rising or the spreading of family planning. From the year 1949, the country's population went from 540 million to 940 million in the year 1976. As seen in the graph, the country's population went from growing by 500,000 every five years to 1 million every five years. This was the impact of Mao Zedong's leadership. It is known that overpopulation in China is a problem. But why is it so important? It's important because with the overpopulation of the country came problems. One of the problems was the detrimental living conditions of the people. Another was that the environment was rapidly polluting. Lastly, it led to a degradation of land and resources. These problems were the major problems recognized by the country. Fortunately, when Mao Zedong died in the year 1976, his successors were able to see that the population growth of the country consumed more than half of the yearly increase of the gross domestic product. So, it was then that China introduced the campaign advocating the two child per family. This campaign provided services, for example, abortions, that helped support the program, and it was due to this that the birth rate fell to 19.5 by the late 1970s from, the, from 25 in the year 1976. In the year 1979, Deng Xiaoping was put into position as the new leader of China. It was him that instituted the famous one-child policy. The one-child policy is a policy that only allows a family to have one child and there will be punishment to those who do not comply. It is stated in the policy that citizens must obtain the birth certificate before the birth of their children. These certificates count as the registration for the policy and they are required to pledge that they will only have one child upon getting the certificate. Some services are provided for free to families who follow the policy. These services would be free sterilization and abortion, as well as being given free contraceptives. Benefits given to those who comply are as follows. In an organization or business, if all members slash employees comply with the policy, they are all given a bonus to, worth two weeks of their salary, as well as the offered special benefits that are access to housing, to education, and to health services. To those who do not comply with the policy, there are sets of consequences. To citizens who have more than one child, they are taxed almost 50% of their income and they may be punished with unemployment. Those households who are not registered are not able to get insurance and the children may not be allowed to go to school. Women who refuse to terminate the second child they are carrying can be sentenced to prison. Then they are forced to abort the child they are carrying. An example for this was in last June, a woman who was seven months pregnant was forced to abort her baby, even if Chinese laws clearly prohibit abortions past six months. The thing is with the one-child policy is that only 35 to 40 percent of the Chinese citizens are affected due to the many exceptions of this policy. Ethnic minorities such as the Mongols and Hans are exempted due to their already limited population. Families who live in rural areas are allowed to have two children if their eldest is a girl in order for their family to have more help in the fields. Multiple births are natural exceptions due to the fact that this is not a thing that can be prevented. Families whose first child is handicapped are also allowed to have another child. Parents who are only children and have only one child so far are exempted as well. Couples who remarry and only have one child in total are also allowed. A husband who has brothers but only one brother is able to have a child and the others have promised not to adopt children themselves. 
Couples who have adopted their first child due to a misdiagnosis of inter- infertility between the two of them may have another child. If the couple are both rural farmers and one can no longer work due to a disability, they may have more than one children. Finally, couples who are both farmers from the deep mountains and only have a daughter and depend on farming to be able to sustain their lives may have more than one child. The results, both expected and unexpected, of the one-child policy are the following. In the year 1979, the fertility was 2.9 and it had gone down in the year 2004 to 1.7. Authorities claim that the policy was able to prevent 250 to 300 million births. The population began to age due to the lack of children being produced. It was said in the year 2013, the elderly population is expected to rise from 194 million to 300 million in the year 2025. The sex ratio between male and female widened due to the fact that traditional families preferred male children because they are known to be the money bringer or the family name carrier. The population imbalance became so severe that there are 37 million more men than there is women. This relates to the abortion rates going up because when they find out that the child is female, they have the tendency to abort it. In the year 2012, 13,600 primary schools closed down due to the lack of enrollees. The number of students enrolled in primary and secondary school between the year 2011 and 2012 fell to 145 million from the original 150 million. Also, between 2002 and 2012, the number of pupils in primary schools fell by 20%. As one can tell by now, the policy was not perfect, and it definitely had its challenges. The most significant problems that came with the policy was the 421 problem. This problem states that one child must take care of two parents and four grandparents. This is known to be a problem because the child may not be able to sustain his life, let alone his parents and grandparents. Human rights were also violated with the implementation of the policy. The violation of the right to be able to freely determine the number of children they want to have, as well as forcing women to submit to abortion and sterilization. Although there is a law against this, it is not entirely forced. Since the implementation of the policy, there has been 336 million abortions, 196 sterilizations, and 403 million intrauterine devices inserted. Finally, the unequal enforcement of the policy because those families that come from a wealthy background can violate it in spite of the fines due to having the money to pay it. Also, some government officials may have violated the policy but did not face penalties due to their position. Overall, according to many critics and researchers, the one-child policy failed. China is still the most populous country in the world, with its size almost doubling from the original number of people it had before the policy was implemented. This policy also created more problems than it did solve. With its population aging, the wide gap between the number of men to women, and the violation of human rights, It seems China has failed to create a better standard of living for its people. Now, we tackle the country New Zealand. After World War II, New Zealand had a baby boom. Baby boom is basically an increase in fertility rate and survival rate of the infants. The baby boom resulted to the decline of the people under 15 from 33% in 1960s to 21% in 2009, while in the age of 65 and over, it increased from 11% in 1991 to 13% in 2009. It is also expected to increase to 21% in 2031. As the number of 15 years old go down and over 65 go up, 
it is expected that in 2020, the age of 65 will outnumber the age of under 15. At the peak of the baby boom, New Zealand was known as one of the highest fertility rate, but it slowly declined after the peak. From 4 births per woman in 1961, it became 2.14 in 2010. In the chart, we can see the difference between 1950 and 2000. In 1950, it had a high percentage in fertility for the age of 0 to 15, while the percentage of 65 and over was low. But in 2000, we can see that the percentage of the age of 0 to 15 slowly decrease, while the age of 65 and over slowly increase. It is expected that in 2030, to 2060, the age of 0 to 15 will slowly decrease while the age of 65 will slowly increase. This is because the people who were born in the time of the baby boom era, they had fewer kids which resulted to them aging without a replacement. The reason why the aging population is a big problem it is because 15 districts in New Zealand is already having a shortage of young adults. This can result to the declining of the workforce and the increased rate in the retirees. The people exiting in the labor market is already one-third more than the people who are entering the market. This means the proportion of the population is already falling. This results to the shortage of people in the service and the GBT growth will decrease over the next 30 years. And with the aging population of the country, they can't do anything because older people are usually replaced with the younger ones. To be able to sustain the shortage in the labor force, the government of New Zealand made sure to implement policies and benefits to attract migrants. The first one is a skilled migrant. A skilled migrant must meet the requirement of minimum 100 points, experience, qualification, and employability. They must also pass the criteria of English skills and health. The benefit of a skilled migrant is the rights of a citizen with the ability to get in and out of the country, they can work for any employer, they can vote, and they have an access in healthcare, and they also have educational subsidies. The second is the work to residency category. The people in the work to residency category are those who cannot meet the requirement of a skilled migrant, those who wishes to stay longer, and those who wishes to apply. The people who can apply for this category are those with a job offer from an accredited employer, people who has an occupation on the long-term skills shortage list, and those who has a talent in art, culture, and sport. In November 2014, the Statistic New Zealand said that the international migration of 2014 has reached 47,684 people. In the map, we can see that 5 out of 16 regions, or two-thirds, has net migration. The top two were Auckland and Canterbury. It gained 2,000 and over in net migration, while Walkato, Ogato, and Wellington only had 1,000 to 2,000 migrants. We can see that the migration is concentrated within the major city, while others had small migrants. In the graph of New Zealand's population growth, we can see that as net permanent and LT migration increases, the population change also increases. But when net permanent and LT migration decreases, the population change also decreases. In this graph, we can see that net permanent and LT migration has a big impact on population change. With the increase of migration in the country, it will give a good GDP in economy and good labor market. 
new migrants add 1.9 billion, international students add 2.3 billion, and tourists add 9 billion in the total GDP of the country. The problem with migration strategy is New Zealand cannot always rely on it. There are 84 countries who are competing and finding skilled workers and are doing everything to attract their attention. Another problem is New Zealand may be the country of immigrants, but they are also the country of emigrants. It was said that 800,000 young adults of New Zealand are living in another country. Migrants also aren't guaranteed to restore fertility to the country. And finally, there is social diversity among people. Because not everyone is from New Zealand, there are different cultures that are clashing. There are also competition among the international and local to get a job. In conclusion, New Zealand may not have a problem in overpopulation, but they do have a big problem in the increase of aging population. Aging population results to low fertility rate, and because the fertility rate is low, the percentage of people under 15 won't be able to replace those who are 65 and over. Aging population also results to low population in the labor force. This means the decrease in the GDP of the country and increase in the expenditures like infrastructures and health care service. The short-term solution of New Zealand is migration, but this won't permanently solve the problem in the fertility rate. And there is no assurance that the net migration will keep increasing or be constant.